welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I am inside the big boy van today and I'm gonna be sharing with you guys a test that we're gonna be doing. Now you might have watched as I did an unboxing of the Set Power TC75, but today we're gonna to be putting it through all of the different tests, including the freezer test. We're gonna be finding out how long it takes to get down to freezing, but then also how long it will take to actually freeze water. So as you can see, I have put a little thermometer here in the van. Now, just to give you guys some context, the van is outside. It is currently uninsulated. It is a hot, sticky day in Texas. So all of these are going to be like the worst case scenario kind of moments for the refrigerator freezer to see how it performs. Now, a lot of you are gonna be encountering 95 degree weather whenever you're in your van, or you're going to have it insulated. So this is just gonna give you kind of a baseline for what happens when it's like, super hot, okay? Um, I wanted to do this because a lot of times I could show you the optimum conditions while I'm on the road and in a nice little climate controlled place. However, that's not realistic. Sometimes you will be in the heat of uh, the summer somewhere. So today I'm gonna be hooking the power station up to the refrigerator freezer. We're gonna do a few tests, let me explain more. Okay, so today I have the Jackery Explorer 1000, which is my primary power station in my tiny van. For those of you who are new, I use an NV200, it's a 2020 model, and this guy is my main power source for so many things. I hook my refrigerator into it, so I'm pretty sure that I kinda have an idea of the baseline. Now, I did go ahead and charge this all the way up to 100%, so we're gonna be doing a couple tests. Test number one, we're going to be plugging it in just to see how long it takes to get to a good temperature. Now I'm going to be using the dual zones because this is a dual zone refrigerator. So you can set this up where you have refrigerator, freezer, refrigerator, refrigerator, or freezer, freezer. So just for this particular survey study thing, we're going to be doing one side refrigerator, one side freezer, which means that this one over here will probably set for freezer, which means it will be at zero degrees. The other one will probably set at like 33 degrees because that's what I usually run my refrigerator at. Now, during this test, we're going to see how long it takes, but also then we are going to put some water into the freezer side just to see how long it will take to come to a solid piece of ice. The next test I will be sharing will be how long it will last in these conditions. So again, Explorer 1000 plugging in the TC75, we're going to find out how many hours that it will stay at freezing and 33 degrees without draining the power station. Now, the reason I wanted to do this is because realistically, I am in my parents' van. This is the one that they are converting. They haven't yet selected how they're going to be powering their van. So they could be doing static solar on the top or they could be using power stations. One way or the other though, they need to know how much power this bad boy is gonna pull because it's gonna be one of their larger ticket items. So that's why we're doing that test. Last but not least, I'll be doing a third test, which is just showing you guys all the cool stuff that you can put inside of it. I want you guys to see how big this thing really is. So I'm gonna be using some standard items that you might be interested in taking along with you and putting them inside so you can see how much it will physically hold. Now with that said, I'm going to move the Jackery off of the top of this for just a minute. And inside one of these, I have cords. We must hook it up. Oh, there they are. Since we are going to be moving this directly into a power station, we only need this one cord right here. This is going to have the connector in that goes into the end over here, and then also the end that will go directly into the Jackery. Do, 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 do. This is gonna be fun, guys. This is gonna be fun. I always get excited whenever we're trying new things out, especially when it's something that I'm very curious about. And with this being such a large item, oh my goodness, so much room for stuff ice cream, ice, so many things. Okay, now to get this to work, all we do is we plug this in to this little slot and I may be backwards on this, let's see. There it goes, okay. So we just push this guy in and then we'll run this cord up to our Jackery. Okay, I'm plugging it into the DC port one-handed, so it's moving just a little bit, but there we go. And I've activated it already. You can see that it will start pulling some watts in just a couple minutes. Now this is going to have a larger compressor, so it will cycle on and off just a little bit. Okay, so just plugged in, we have about two watts going out. And then when we turn it on, there we go. Now, 
It still hasn't cranked up a whole lot just yet, but we haven't cranked the temperature down yet. Okay, so for this one, in order to change the temperature, it says that we are going to short press the plus button to increase the temperature and the negative to decrease. So let's see over here. It looks like this. So, huh, that's interesting. Let's see what that does. Huh. Okay, so this component is a bit different than my other set power. The other one I can just hold down and it immediately starts to drop in temperature, but this one is doing something a little different. So I'm gonna read a little bit further. Okay guys, I figured it out. So whenever you hold it down, what it does is it shows you that is the temperature it's working its way to. So whenever I look at this one, currently I have it set at 17. So let's go up to 30 three degrees, which is where I want to set it for this test. So 33 degrees on this side, it'll be zero degrees on this side. So that means that the big side, which is the side that the Jackery is on will be our freezer section. And then this side will be our refrigerator section for the time being. Ooh, I think you can see I'm starting to sweat. It is a warm day for sure. So this is going to be what we're going to be coming back and referencing in just a few minutes. And uh, currently, currently, just so you guys get an idea, uh, it's 94 degrees. Oh, it's, it's toasty here in Texas. It is toasty. And as it is trying to work toward those temperatures, it's pulling about 53 watts right now. Again, in the heat from start, 53 watts. So what it's going to do is it's going to cycle down as low as it can toward those temperatures. And then the compressor will cut off and on just to regulate it. I'm going to step outside this van and give it about 10 minutes and then I'm going to come back and check it out. But we're going to close the door of the van, which is going to make it even more hot in here. So this is going to be a good challenge. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. Let's go check this out. Ugh! Oh, the doors. Oh, the doors. Okay, so here we go. It looks like we have run down 1% of the Jackery. It is 97 degrees inside, but we are having some temperatures fall. So let's go check them out. Okay, it looks like we're down to 60 right now. So in 10 minutes, it fell about 12 degrees. That's not terrible. This one is still hanging out at 79. So I'm going to see if I did this one right. Um, I think I did, but yeah, I did. Okay. So we're just waiting. This one's taking a little bit longer. This is on the compressor end though. It's only been 10 minutes. So that's not too bad. And it is a hot, hot day. So I'm going to give it about 20 more minutes and oop, oop, another degree just fell off. So after 20 minutes, we'll come and check it out. It's still running at about 58 Watts and we're now down 2% on the Jackery Explorer 1000 so far. So we're gonna give this a minute. We'll be right back. Okay, it's time to go outside to do another update. It's been about 20 minutes and uh, I have been enjoying the air conditioner inside, but alas, it is time for us to go back out to the, the Texas heat. Okay, temperature update, it's 99 degrees inside the box. We are pulling approximately 47 watts and have come down to 96%. So we lost about 4% in the superheat over about 30 minutes. Now we are sitting at 40 degrees and 59 degrees. So it is definitely coming down and uh, we're getting pretty close to uh, kind of our end goal now. So I'm going to leave it for just a little bit longer and uh, we'll come back and check again. I realize this is a lot of back and forth just to see how long it takes, but I wanted to kind of give you updates that are in sizable chunks. So 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Now we're going to give it about 20 more minutes and um, that will be a good judge of how long it took to cool this down. Now, again, this thing has been sitting out here already in the heat. So it's pretty warm to the touch whenever I even got out here. So I knew that it was going to be a bit of an uphill climb to get it to its normal consistent temperature. Just for reference, whenever I plugged in my set power for the first time, I did so during fall and it only took about 20 minutes to get all the way down to the temperature it needed to because it was a nice pleasant temperature outside. So I knew this was going to be a challenge going in, but I'm pretty pleased so far. And we, ooh, 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 we just lost another degree. So I'm going to give it 20 last minutes and then we'll kind of check in to see where we are. Okay. I have returned. And as you can see, I brought some things out to put in the freezer. Now it isn't quite down to zero, but it's a hundred degrees in here. So I can understand that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these inside so that we can let them have a good fair shake at freezing. And I'm going to do that on this side right here. So let me clear it off. Ooh, ah, here we go onto the floor and pop this little guy up. Oh, wow. So I can say this, 
It is already feeling very nice in there. Oh, wow. I forgot to take these little gel pad things out. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those. And then this is a splash Nestle water. So this has a little bit of carbonation in there. So we're gonna see how this goes. But I also have this, which is gonna require two hands, but it is a little ice tray. So as you can see, they're both in here. I'm gonna go ahead and close this down. And then I'm going to put the Jackery up on this side, I think, so that we'll be able to open it in a minute. But right now we're down to 94% and it's still pulling pretty hard because it's still trying to get down to that optimum temperature. So we're at about a 42 watt draw at this moment. And uh, the temperatures keep going down, so that's good. I'll say this, it is boiling in here. So I'm very impressed by the fact that it is being able to keep up and also push that temperature down in this. That is awesome. Now, if it was me, <laughs> just me by myself, I would probably dedicate one of these to a freezer and one to a fridge just because then I could have the best of both worlds. And in temperatures like this, oh my goodness, it would definitely be worth it to have that little extra power having to get it down to that zero just so it wouldn't burn up because Having a nice frozen water bottle just to hold up against your body on a hot day is, is pleasant to say the least. But if you're not a person who would be needing that, again, this is the worst case scenario of how much draw it will do. And so we'd probably be pulling about 25 to 30 watts right now if we were just in refrigerator mode. Uh, that's kind of what I've noticed with the set powers. There is that much of a difference between freezer and uh, refrigerator. So again, I'm gonna walk away from this for just a little bit, keep track of the time, and we'll come back out and check on it in just a few. I always love testing things, but testing things before you leave out of base camp is usually quite the process. So thanks for coming along with me on this adventure because uh, it has just begun. It's been about an hour since our last checkup and um, it is time. Oh, it's hot in here. In fact, it is 101 degrees in the van. We are down to 90% on the Jackery, but it is pulling about 41 watts right now. Now the temperatures, it shows they have come down significantly. So we're about two degrees off on this one and we're a little bit off on this one still, but let's give it a check because technically anything below 32 will start to form ice crystals. So let's see, we're just gonna poke our finger in. It's still wet which is fine. This one is still very much so fluid also. So we're not there yet, but again, I'm gonna keep monitoring this to see kind of how it goes. And uh, we're gonna close this so we don't have all of our cold air escaping. You know, it's a process guys, it's a process. This has been going for about overall an hour and 40 minutes and we pulled about 10% of the Explorer 1000 down. Hey guys, while I've been working on this test, I've been doing a little bit of work here at base camp. So let's go check out the fridge. I'm really excited. Let's see how this is doing. Now, it's been sitting in the heat in direct sun. Let me show you. Okay, let's try this out. Let's see what we got going on. Woo! Oh, you can just feel the heat come out of the box. Now looking at this, we can see that it's 14 degrees and 37 degrees. So it is definitely fighting this heat. And let me let you hear the compressor. I have to say, I have tried a lot of refrigerators out and considering how hard this one is having to work right now, that's not bad. That's not a terrible sound. Especially considering that most people, whenever they have their refrigerator in their van, they're also going to have it contained in some way. So that is a very minimal amount of noise from a compressor that has been running nonstop now because of the heat for uh, a couple of hours. Let's see where we're at in our freezer right now. Again, fighting this heat. Oh, but we're starting to get some, oh, that one's completely like, oh, that one is a piece of ice right there. So we're starting to get a nice crystallization that's forming. And then some of these are frozen, frozen. Now this guy right here, again, I don't know if this is going to freeze because it has carbonation, but oh, oh, look, it's starting to get real cloudy in there. So maybe, just maybe we'll be able to do the, and it'll freeze test in a little bit. It's not quite there yet, but 
it is definitely forming a chunk. So yeah, this is working. Definitely getting cold, cold, cold in there. And uh, just letting you know, the air coming out of here feels amazing. Now, something else that I had wanted to show you guys in person, whenever the lid lifts, we talked about that there was a light that illuminates the space. There's the light right there. It's just a nice little subtle light, but it definitely gives you some view inside. So that is doing good but let's check the jacker okay we're coming down in the watts that's being pulled because it's not needing quite as much now that it is starting to get cooler so it's at 39 watts instead of the much higher amount that it started out with and again this is still running non-stop because you can see behind it is still 100 degrees in here but we're at 79 percent of the jackery still and i have realistically had this going for I want to say three and a half hours now. So three and a half hours, we're down to 79%. That is not bad. And again, we're starting to freeze over here. So huge, huge bonus. What's gonna be cool is I'm gonna leave the Jackery in here overnight and it'll be much cooler at night because it hasn't been in the 90s at nighttime, thank goodness. But what I figure we'll do is we'll see how much that it takes up before then and we'll see what happens kind of overnight and you'll get to see that it does reduce dramatically once you get into the hours that aren't 4 million degrees. <laughs> but all in all, so far so good. I am really pleased with not only the size but also the output so far. That was cold inside guys. That was very cold. You can probably tell it is no longer full sun. So it's starting to get a little bit cooler outside. It's still pretty sticky, but slightly cooler. So we're gonna do a checkup. Um, it has at this point been several hours. One more time inside. We still feel the heat whenever we open the door. Okay, so we are now down to 70% of the Jackery and 90 degrees. Let's get inside. Let's get inside and uh, check this out a little bit more. Now, again, zero degrees and 33 degrees is what we're trying to achieve, but ultimately we're mostly just trying to freeze on one side and have nice coolness on the other. You'll notice that it is dropping less and less now because again, it's already gotten to that nice place of coldness, so it's not needing to pump out near as hard. In fact, I don't even hear the compressor on right now, so that's good. We're at 12 degrees and 35 degrees, and let's go check the freezer real quick. Okay, ooh, I can already see that we have actual ice in some of these, like actual ice, like I'm pushing on it and it is not breaking through. These are good ice cubes. So over half of these are now frozen, and this guy, oh, look at this. This is no longer flowing water. You have just a few little bubbles left, but that's pretty frozen. You might be thinking, okay, so you can freeze water, cool. But think about it this way. If you're taking things that are already frozen and putting them into the capacity of this when it's already cool, it's gonna just keep them. So it's not gonna have to work near as hard to do the process. But if you are wanting to make ice, we're kind of getting an idea as to how long that takes. Okay, so progress though, it's at 33 watts when the compressor is on as opposed to the higher number that it started out as. Again, we are to 70% and now I'm going to leave it here overnight. We're gonna wake up in the morning and see what a good night's sleep can do to the pooling of the Jackery. Now it is gonna be warm tomorrow, but in the earlier morning hours is when I will check it. And so we'll do a follow-up. And guys, it's all about doing tests before you get out on the road so you know what to expect. So that's what we're doing. Okay, hello. Okay, so my dad is in his van right now, and dad, I've had this going since 7 o'clock. Last night is the last time I checked it. I started off at 2 o'clock yesterday. Can you open up that compartment right there and uh, show me what you find? Got a frozen bottle of water. Woohoo! We got a completely frozen bottle of water. The frozen thing of ice cubes. Oh yeah, so everything is completely frozen in the frozen side. Now, again, this is the Jackery that we've been using. How much of a percentage do we have left on the Jackery, Dad? We got 18%. Okay, so that's been going since two o'clock yesterday. It is now what time? Approximately like 10 o'clock, our time 10, probably? 10.30, something like that. Okay, so it's been going overnight. It drained it down to 18%, but something that I wanna get a little closer for, see that temp right there? It came down to one degrees and 34 degrees. So that's where we wanted it to be. 
And since it has gotten down to the core temperature that we're looking for, it's only pulling about one watt. So, like I said yesterday in the midst of all the heat, after it actually regulates down to the temperature you want it to, the compressor does not have to kick on and off. So, overnight, it was able to regulate. So, it's probably only cycling on once or twice per hour now. But 18% still, it has been going for hours. And... um it's already 87 degrees today. So it is kicking up to be a warm day here. I am gonna let this go ahead and play out this last 18% to see how long it lasts. But yeah, this is pretty cool. Dad, what do you think? I think it's all right. Think you can put lots of stuff in there? Yeah, it looks like a lot of room, enough for me. Okay, so now we're gonna, I guess, have to do our next test, which is showing them how much stuff we can put in here. So I'm gonna grab a few things and bring them back out here just to kind of give you some spatial awareness. And uh, yeah, again, we're gonna let this keep going on this little test though for a while. Okay, this is my last checkup, I think. And we're getting up there in temperatures again. It's 97 degrees inside the van. So again, it's heating up for the day and we are down to 7% of the Jackery. Now, a couple things. This thing has now been going for 24 hours and it drained an Explorer 1000, but that is because it's super hot outside. Now, I could estimate that if it weren't so hot and it was just an average temperature, you could probably get about a day and a half to two days out of an Explorer 1000. With that said, that gives Dad a great idea as to what to expect when it comes to his power situation that he's gonna need for not only the fridge, but other parts of the van. So this has been a really super cool test, but now it's time for us to see what all we can load into this thing. And I think the best test of this is just to find all the cool stuff that might go into your van. So while I'm at base camp, I have access to larger items and smaller items. So let's see what fits. I guess you can already see these are definitely gonna fit. This is a standard Tyson Dino Nuggies. We have a steamable, which is a meal for two. And then we have this Philly cheesesteak. The Philly cheesesteak box is approximately one foot. So as you can see, um, that's easily gonna fit, but there's gonna be a lot of room left. So let's load them in. As you can see, they can not only fit, but they can stand upright and there's plenty of room around them. And this is the side I have currently set for the refrigerator. So this tells me I could easily use this as a freezer side or, or rather my parents could. You see how I just did that? This really makes me want a freezer, guys. It really does. But uh, back inside we go. Let's get something tall that would normally need to, you know, stand. What about this guy? Will it fit? Yeah, I think it will. I think it will. Will it go? Oh yeah. There is a nice little distance still between the top of that and where the lid needs to close. So yeah, you can see that is a regular two liter. So in this case alone, we could fit one, two, three, and then possibly three more. So six two liters, oh my goodness. But what about a standard size milk jug? This one's a water jug, obviously, but will it fit? Oh yeah, oh yeah, easily that will fit. So I think you guys can see now why this is such a big deal. This thing truly is huge. And I think that whenever sharing it with you guys in the unboxing, you could see it was big. But when you start putting physical things in it, that's whenever you realize just how large and in charge it really is. So again, this can be the freezer and the refrigerator, which is what I have it currently set up for. Or you could do both of these as a freezer or both as a fridge. If you did the smaller one as the freezer, you could put probably a full gallon of ice cream in here, no problem. Of course, you could put tons of other stuff. These little bagged meals that I have over here, they're just loosely set in there. You could put so much food in there if you were looking to do that. So yeah, all in all, this is amazing. Best part is whenever you close it, it actually latches, like the latch latches and then it does not pull up, which is nice. That means it's locking in every bit of that cool air, which we need, especially on a day that is currently 95 here in the van. 
Okay guys, so now that we've run a few tests and I've showed you kind of what all can go in there, what are your thoughts of the TC75? Write in the comments below what you think and let me know. Of course, as you guys know, this is a work in progress. This is my parents' 2006 Dodge Sprinter and they are working to create their own adventure vehicle. So I'm super happy to be able to share this with you guys as a result of their build. I hope that if you're looking for a larger refrigerator option, you will consider the TC75 because Oh my goodness, I am just really pleased with this, especially when dad picks his power source and I think he's going to go with um, some solar. He's been looking it up today. Oh my goodness. I think this is gonna be a perfect solution for them because they'll have that on demand power. Again, guys, I wanted to give you the worst case scenario of testing out a product. And so we did it in the Texas heat. We did it on a hot day of the week and we did it inside an enclosed, uninsulated van. And I think you can see that even despite all of those odds it had against it, it froze, it kept it cool, and it did a good job. Until next time, guys, bye.